Welcome back. Uh, I love these real estate days because it does. It, we talked about it the other day. It's cocktail conversation. People are discussing real estate all the time, everywhere. There's a lot of information that's available on it. And, uh, you know, today, Sam DeBoard joins us. He's a broker with Cool Old Banker Danforth, who uh, writes regularly with the PI, as well as appeared in the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and HGTV. Uh, welcome, Sam. Thanks for having me, Ben. Yeah, my pleasure. So, um, you know, what I, I, I'm, we're talking about the information, and Ian had just mentioned about condos and the amount of information that goes into making a decision on condos, right? And... Their real estate agents kind of used to be the gatekeepers of information. And I know we've actually talked on this show about just the, the, the books they used to turn through. Um, but why is it beneficial to, I mean, have so much information for the public to really see? And then what should a professional agent be doing to make sure that they're kind of filtering that information or, or maybe adding to it in a way like Ian had talked about condos? Well, I think that's probably the main point, really, what Ian came up with is when you're looking at buyers online right now, they're really looking for as much information as they can find. Um, the most important thing, though, is the most accurate information that they can find. And we're really trying, obviously, as an industry, like you said, the books from the old days, we were sort of trying to force people into certain listings from our company. Um, and obviously, buyers aren't looking for that. They want to get as many listings as they can see, really feel like they understand the whole market. So... For us, uh, you know, really the point is to to get all those listings available in one location for everyone, but also not to filter it by this brokerage, you know, whether it's commission rate or anything else, um, really make people feel comfortable that they're seeing the whole picture because consumers are so empowered right now by the Internet as it is. If they don't feel like they're seeing the whole picture, they're going to move on to the next site. But there's actually, well, most sites have, I think, everything. And what you end up with, though, is, I mean, don't you end up kind of here with, as much inventory and as much information is out there. Are people looking for maybe information that isn't always in the listing? That's, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of information that isn't on these websites. Absolutely. Well, and there's two parts to that. There's the accuracy of your local information and obviously a local broker who can get more of that information that you wouldn't find from a national portal, um, whether it's neighborhood information, school info, and not just your average generic spreadsheet on a school's test scores, but uh, you know, someone who really knows the neighborhood. So like, that your, like your kid goes there. You can definitely recommend <laughs> exactly, it, right? Exactly. Or you've sold a home in that neighborhood. You've got friends that live there. Um, but I think there's also something about people believing that they see every listing for sale on every website, whereas some of your, we'll say, non-brokerage sites actually have a lot of fake foreclosure data, we really call it these days. I mean, that's the most simplified way to put it. There's a lot of relisted properties, outdated things that have already been sold or already pending. So um, you know, any of our brokerages, Ian or mine, would have everything that's for sale, but it's updated by the day. Sounds a little bit like the old Homes and Land magazines that used to, you know, they had the uh, shelf life of a Twinkie. Right. And, Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, I mean, you didn't go, oh, that house is for sale for 200000 You had no clue where it was. Right. And it was 14 years previous. It had just been in a nice... Uh, and if you call in, a... in, you've done exactly what they wanted you to do anyway. So, yeah, it's really about, you know, making sure that people understand if they see something on, on the website, whatever site it is that they're using, it should be something that's current and it's not just a lead generation technique. It's really homes for sale. And that's what consumers are going to punish you or, you know, they're going to stay on your site either way based on how you do that. Well, and so many of those are lead generation. I mean... The, the lead generation aspect, it's the same thing in mortgage, and there's actually a big change coming up in that people who are in the mortgage business are actually going to be held responsible for the ad or for the leads they buy if the if the advertised rates are bogus. So, you know, you click and the lower my bills in the corner. They always quote these rates that nobody can get. So now then, anyways, the extension of that, which is interesting about the truthfulness of information is extending to the mortgage business as well, which it should. And absolutely. Uh, you know, it might be a little scary for someone who's buying it from three parties down the line, but when it comes down to it, if you can't, you know, provide your truthfulness in your advertising, you know, to your consumer, the end product, then you're you're sort of uh, going to be out of, in bad shape in the future anyway. Do you, where do you see inventory? What's going on with it? What's kind of on the market? I mean, you, you have a beat of what's going on. I, we're seeing a lot of different things. General picture is that inventory is down a lot. Uh, you know, one of the first good signs that most people would point to um, for a recovery. So um, total Northwest MLS area, we're down about 17%, I think, right now in terms of total listings on the market since last year. 
Um, that's a great sign. It's not everything, but you have to see a few of these factors pop up first. Um, as we know, pricing's still down a little bit, and you know that's part of people buying cheaper homes, people buying distressed properties. It's not purely a discount. Not everybody's home has lost 12% of its value in the last year, but the median price is down 12%. So um, those those numbers are still always going to grab more headlines, but in general, inventory is maybe not as exciting of a number to talk about. Um, but we know there's not this huge influx of properties coming on the market. There will be more distressed properties, but uh, you know Seattle in particular is down about 30% from a year ago um, in terms of total inventory. We've got neighborhoods where there's literally almost nothing for sale. Within South Lake Union's actual borders, there are, I think, three condos for sale right now, and one of them is $2 million. So in pockets where it's actually popular, the inventory is really low. And, I mean, where the, where the jobs are, I mean, as we've all Absolutely. heard about. Absolutely, right. Do you think that this suggests a recovery, or do you think there's just – is it just this weird lull? And, and I know we're going to hit on this a lot more when it will bring everybody back, but um... – uh, you know, if you call bottom, you're pretty much doomed to be wrong. So somebody's going to get it right, but there's uh, nine out of ten people who have already gotten wrong already. So it, it suggests a lot of good things for the market, but there's a bigger economic picture. There's a lot of things happening with distressed properties that are still going to come on the market. Um, you have to say it when you see good signs. And, you know, some of these neighborhoods, even like a South Lake Union, the recent sales are selling for the same price as they were two, three years ago. So if you see little pockets like that, you can say that maybe the whole market's taken a drop in prices, but some of these neighborhoods are not. They're actually selling for the same prices, and there's some strength in the top areas right now. Well, and, and I think it also comes down to it only takes one house to find the right one. Absolutely. And so if you're the one out there looking for a house and you can find somebody who's professional enough to guide you and help you understand what you want, I mean, you're, 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 it's, it, whether it's one house or 100 houses on the market, you're still only looking for one. Well, and that's true, and it's not just inventory. I mean, inventory is one thing that helps, but sales are up. Um, you know, prices get a lot of publicity, but we, I think we're down, let's see, we're down 20% or so in inventory, and we're up about 7% in closed sales. Um, again, that's just another thing that's going to bolster the market as far as pricing goes. Pending sales are up a lot. People have sort of poo-pooed those numbers a lot because of the number of short sales and everything. A lot of those will end up falling out, but the short sale process is actually getting better. Um, you know, those are actually moving a little better. I mean, that's big caveat there. Short well, sales are still not fast. Yeah, and, and the one thing that I, I tend to really like to kind of harp on is short sales and foreclosures are part of the market. Right. There's a lot of people who like to completely, well, those are short sales. Yeah, well, those are also houses that are selling and they're in your neighborhood. So it's it's not really fair to, as you say, poo-poo them. Right, right, absolutely. And and it does make a difference. There are some buyers who are only looking for a nice home and move-in condition, and so the market they should be looking at is probably resale properties, and that's where those pricing and inventories really matter. But, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, we, we don't necessarily love the term discount that people apply to distressed properties because they're probably in worse condition and there's a reason they're selling for less. But banks are also taking some small, true discounts on these properties to sell them more quickly. So they, they will affect the numbers going forward. Well, Sam, thanks so much for joining us. It's Sam DeBoard, broker with Coldwell Banker Danforth. Uh, when we come back, you talking about low home supply um, and what, what is going on with prices. Aubrey Cohn is going to join us, who actually just wrote an article named almost that from with the Seattle P.I., Low home supply isn't helping prices. Find out why when we come back. My name is Ben Brashen. You're listening to Brashen Honest. 